Hey guys, Red Edinburgh here, and we are back with another SCP reading. We are on to SCP-36, the reincarnation pilgrimage of the Yazidi, Kyrus Guthorin. SCP-36, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. Once a year, a mobile task force is dispatched from Containment Command 02 in Expunged to Site 22A to defend the runaway and airport located there. The civilian facility is to be cleared of all non-SCP personnel by 0400 hours of September 23rd and none are allowed to return until sunrise the next day. On October 1st, all civilians must be evacuated again before sunrise and will not be allowed onto Site 22A until the return of the pilgrimage flight. Pilgrimage Pilgrims in transport transit from the arrival flight awaiting departure on the pilgrim flight must only be cross-examined by researchers with level 3 security clearance or higher. Description SCP-36 includes a location, Site 22A, a small airport in the Mosul region of northern Iraq, and Site 22B. The destination of passengers boarding the Site 22A. Key components of SCP 36 are the arrival flight, a passenger plane that varies in make and model from year to year, that arrives shortly before dawn on September 23rd. It appears on radar about 30 to 40 kilometers away from Site 22A. When it lands, pilgrims exit the plane and enter the terminal. No crew has ever left the plane. Observations have only revealed a masked pilot and co-pilot. The plane leaves quickly after the pilgrims exit and does not wait for clearance to take off, nor does it identify itself upon approach for landing. The pilgrims, people of the, Z the Yazadi faith, that exit the arrival plane, who are said to be undergoing the Kiraz Guhorin each year, are examined and identified as various people of the Yazidi faith that have died during the previous year. This is done through birth certificates, photo IDs, specific knowledge questions, and when possible, fingerprinting. Most have been known to be friendly and amicable, although most are reluctant to give details about the Kiraz Guhorin. In the past, all have shown to be unable to recognize family or friends or been able to remember any information beyond what short-term memory would normally allow. In the late afternoon of September 23rd, most pilgrims begin to emphasize how important it is that their pilgrimage must begin. At that time, they file, fl they file onto the pilgrimage flight plane and depart, never to be seen again. The Pilgrimage Flight, a passenger plane provided by the SCP personnel for the transport of the pilgrims, it is manned by a crew of trained Yazadi holy men. The crew are typically never able to elaborate upon the details of the pilgrimage or what the Kiraj Gihorin actually is. SCP equipment on board functions normally and optimally, but recorded data will only slightly increase their understanding of the pilgrimage each year. Although the flight is gone for seven days, the crew and recorded data are only, to, only able to account for a few hours. Days are missing from time recording. Days are missing from time recording equipment and cameras. Although nothing abnormal is ever observed, the plane disappears from radar and visual contact is lost about 50 to 60 kilometers away from Site 22A until it returns about sunrise on October 1st. Site 22B, the destination of the pilgrimage plane, is a small airport consisting of a runway and a single building located at coordinates expunged. It has only been observed by a pilgrimage crew and cameras on the plane. It does not appear on satellite images and attempts to reach it on foot have failed, once with disastrous results. Cameras have trouble focusing on the area. And as the heat from the ground usually causes mirage-like visual effects on all objects more than a few dozen meters from the plane. A flyover with an SCP reconnaissance plane several weeks before the pilgrimage reveal reveals underdeveloped land and what looked like an ancient stone statue. 
In the 1990s, SCP Mobile Task Force Sigma 4 attempted to reach Site 22B during the time of the pilgrimage. Upon the approach, communication was lost and the task force was never heard from again. No other exploration attempts are advised during the seven day pilgrimage. Originally, the Kuridash speaking Yazadi people around Mosai secretly performed the pilgrimage themselves. Pilgrims of the East were escorted by masked armed guards on camelback into the care of the Yazadi holy men. It has been explained that the holy men would then take the pilgrimages west, pilgrims west to their land of the dead, where the pilgrims would wait to be reborn back into the Yazadi people. The Kuraius Guhren literally Kurdish for changing garments, is used to describe the belief of reincarnation that lesser souls of the Yazadi undergo, undergo while the actual pilgrimage is, pilgrimage is done in secret. The symbolic pilgrimage and the Yazadi Guhrin are performed every year at this way and time by other Yazadi. During the 1960s, land acquisition by Kurds and Muslims, attacks by Kirks, and punitive laws by the Islamic Iraqi government restricted the movements and customs of the Yazadi. During that time, the foundation stepped in and offered aid in the, in the way of the advantageous clause that granted SCP planes unrestricted access to airport facilities in the area. Almost immediately, Mysterious planes carrying pilgrims from the east began landing at the local airport in an elusive and an elusive airport at the destination appeared as well. So essentially a weird pilgrimage made by unknown people for unknown means that has something to do with death and reincarnation. Cool. We are on to SCP thirty seven Dwarf Star. Special Containment Procedures SCP-37 is magnetically contained in a subterranean complex known as Site-22. Object size, spectral signature and temperature are constantly monitored both on site and remotely from Site-98. The primary containment chamber is lined with heat conducting radiation resistant nanopeak GFV polymer tiles and evacuated of any atmosphere. Heat from the object is radiated onto the surrounding rock. Should enclosure integrity become compromised, the emergency system will generate a low power argon plasma shield. This is projected to provide a minimum of four hours for the on site engineers to effective to effect necessary repairs before the object breaches containment. If the contingency that stellar evolution proceeds ahead of projections and a nova event appears imminent, or if containment failure is otherwise unavoidable, any remaining project staff are authorised to initiate the Pittock Protocol. Description SCP-37 appears to be a star approximately 5 centimetres in diameter with a luminosity of about 1 to the, 1 to the 10 negative 12 power times that of our sun and a surface temperature of about 5000 Kelvin. The origin of SCP-37 is unknown, however, analysis suggests that it shares many properties in common with the typical main sequence star, other than its abnormally small size. It is theorised to have entered Earth's magnetosphere via the North Magnetic Pole. The object was discovered in 19 blank above the Buffon Sea at approximately the North Magnetic Pole. Intense electromagnetic interference was reported by Canadian Forces Station CFS alert, followed by an extremely bright object descending towards the ocean from the sky. The SCPS Guardian responded and discovered the object wavering in an erratic trajectory about 200 metres above the surface of the water. Once containment procedures were devised, it was transported to Site 32 for study. Containment and transport of SCP-37 have been achieved by use of powerful electromagnetics to which the artifact aligns itself according to its own magnetic field. The primary challenge of containment thus far has been its powerful electromagnetic emissions 
which are intense enough to easily be seen by the naked eye from high Earth orbits. Its current enclosure is located deep underground to prevent detection and to facilitate radioactive cooling into the surrounding bedrock. In effect, the entire facility and the surrounding volume of the Earth's crust acts as a massive heat sink. Addendum A. Over the past blank years of study, the star has undergone a shift in emitting EM radiation, suggesting that it is undergoing stellar evolution at a vastly accelerated rate. If the standard stellar models hold up, this will soon result in the increase of mass by a factor of 100 to 300 times and a concosmetic increase in radiated energy. Emergency containment contingencies are being studied for that eventuality. Further progression of the star's life cycle will likely terminate in a stellar nova, which is estimated by the yield of blank. Extrapolations predict this to occur in blank. Research is underway for a method to arrest this development or to transport SCP-37 a safe distance from the planet before it occurs. Now, what is the Pittock Protocol? O5 Council from Dr. Ines. Subject, SCP-37 Emergency Neutralization Research. Body, Sirs and Madams. The agents embedded in the US DOD have managed to alter the project requirement for the NASA Orbiter Program. The vehicle will now be designed with enough space to accommodate SCP-037 and a temporary containment apparatus in order to facilitate transport off-planet. However, I continue to have reservations. Modern rocket technology is simply not reliable enough for the needs of this project. A single mistake could lead to launch failure and subsequent loss of containment, possibly catastrophe. Even a successful launch would have to proceed perfectly, lest the result be visible to observational, observ observatories and instruments, and possibly the naked eye, around the world. There are numerous artifacts contained by the Foundation which might allow us to transport SCP-37 safely and cost-effectively to an adjacent dimension, universe, or esoteric domain. SCP blank in particular might prove especially convenient for this purpose, considering the outcomes of recent attempts to explore it and the difficulty of n blank. Neutralization of SCP-37 might thus serve the added purpose of reducing or removing the threat posed by that anomaly as well. I implore you to consider the Pittock Protocol submitted in light of these concerns. End message. So, a star that the SCP Foundation has got underground. Cool. Um, and I th think... Oh yeah, we have time for one more. <clears throat> the Everything Tree. SCP-38. Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-38 is to be watered twice a day via overhead mister. Should the mister break down for any reason, attendants should water SCP-38 by hand until it has been fixed. Lighting is provided by computer-controlled lighting, lighting array. Attendants watering SCP-38 by hand and maintenance personnel fixing master, mister, or lighting should wear hazmat suits to prevent accidental cloning. Description SCP-38 was found in an abandoned farm in blank, New York, in 19 blank. It was at first thought to be the common apple tree, however, upon closer inspection, it has become apparent that SCP-38 was growing things other than apples, and, in fact, other than fruit. SCP-38 has the ability to clone any object that touches its bark. Objects begin growing almost instantaneously and reach maturity within a matter of minutes. A weight limit of 90.9 kilograms, 200 pounds, per object has been previously recorded. Objects that SCP-38 has thus far cloned includes apples, oranges, watermelons, eggplants, candy bars, snack foods, see addendum 1, televisions, toasters, laptops, keys, see addendum 2, wine, chairs, DVDs, CDs, see addendum 3, cats, dogs and people. Human and animal cloning through SCP-38 is not recommended, as they appear to age quickly. The majority of these clones live, on average, two weeks, although thorough examination of these disease, deceased clones, it has been determined that they had begun f to ferment before death. Object is currently held on Site-23, where there is currently no plans to move it. Addendum 1 
Dr. Kane has requested that personnel discontinue from cloning items from the vending machines. Addendum 2. Dr. Klan has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of personal items. Addendum 3. Dr. Klan has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of movies and music. Addendum 4. Dr. Klan has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of cans of Miller, Budweiser and Foster's. Dr. Klan has furthermore expressed customary disapproval of the quality of such cloned items. Document 3381. I would like to remind all personnel that, 30, that SCP-38 is not, I repeat, not a toy. It should not be used for cloning car keys, movies, music, or items from the vending machine. If this behavior continues, I will be forced to limit access to SCP-38. SCP-338-2 It has been noted that SCP-38 is able to clone SCP-500. SCP-500 is a bunch of pills that will rejuvenate anyone and anything from any disease, both anomalous and normal, to full working health. However, such pills only work 30% of the time, with the chance of successful healing dropping as time since cloned increases. In 60% of the cases where the infection is permanent, symptoms of the infection remain, although further infection is neutralized. SCP-38 Partial Testing Log. Select experiments only. Date. 8th of the 11th blank. Confirmation of mass limit. Investigation into consequences of exceeding limit. Summary of test results. 400 pounds still Inga made contact with the outer bark of SCP-38. Chamber ev evacuated. As a precaution, cloned ingot grew at typical speed, but growth halted abruptly short of completion. Examination at the end of the aborted facsimile revealed a rough texture superficially resembling miniature scale tree bark. Item detached from SCP-38 as typical and was subsequently found to weigh 90.91 kilograms or almost precisely 200 pounds. Date 8th of the 11th blank. Investigation into duplication of non-biological animate matter. Summary test results. SCP-173 deemed a suitable test subject because of its lack of venerable life processes. Introduced to containment chamber by Class D personnel. Contact made with the outer bark of SCP-38. SCP-173 returned immediately to containment. SCP-173 facsimile began development at typical speed, beginning at point of contact. As consistent with previous results, growth halted at the 200 pound threshold, in this case terminating development after the replication of the head, right arm and partial upper torso. Class D subject was ordered to break eye contact with the clone, and when the subject eventually blinked, no movement was observed in clone material. Extinguished and re-establishment of containment chamber light supply revealed no apparent reaction from the clone material. Experiment concluded. During storage of cloned portion of SCP-173, it was observed that the partial facsimile was in fact making violent gestures at a dramatically slower rate. Movement was shown to continue regardless of state of observation. So, you have a tree that can clone anything and everything, and what do they do with it? They clone SCPs, as well as candy bars and music. Oh well, why not? So, thank you guys so much for watching or rather listening. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, because why not? It's free. And anyway, I'll see you guys in the next episode. And until then, bye.